Hey guys, Dwayne here, and I have a new cassette community video to do of some recent pickups as uh, for tapes, as well as a couple of new vintage decks that I picked up. Uh, one I picked up a couple weeks ago. Uh, I wasn't going to bother showing it, um, but since I picked up another one uh, yesterday, yeah, Sunday. So yeah, yesterday morning I picked it up. Um, and got it all cleaned up and ready to go this morning. So I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna go ahead and show them both. So those will be towards the end of the video. First thing I wanna do is show the recent tapes I picked up, but I also wanna give a big thanks to my brother LJ, Biosite One. Uh, I got home uh, from work <clears throat> uh, Friday and uh, I had a package waiting for me. Uh, no, Saturday. It was actually Saturday, day before yesterday. And uh, totally unexpected package. And uh, I was going to do a live opening, but uh, I wasn't going to be able to shoot a video till today. And I couldn't wait to open it. So uh, it was a small package, but what he put in there was just really cool. Uh, no trade or anything, just strictly some, some VC, well, some CCLT. Uh, so a couple of cassettes as well as a couple of CDs. Uh, and he, of course, uh, included a, a little note. And I don't think LJ would mind if I read this one. Uh, this just goes to show you, um, you know, I know we call it the love train <clears throat> and whatnot, but, you know, um, it's also friendship, you know. And what he wrote was, um, Bretta, nothing too special, just some things I've come across in the past month or so that had Laz written all over them. Enjoy and pass them on if you already have them. Hope uh, all are well. Love you, man. Best, LJ. Well, LJ, Bretta, I love you too, bro. And it just so happens I have a couple things that I've been stashing to the site for you too. So those will be forthcoming. Um, so let me show you what LJ sent me. Uh, first of all, and yeah, one that I didn't have on cassette. One Genesis album that I didn't have. And it's the self-titled uh, Genesis. And... Uh, so he sent me this and in fact lj uh the four things that you sent i i did not have so you picked some good ones man and i mean this puppy's like in mint condition so um thanks bro you know genesis you know how to get me uh get me at the heart as well as this um i've said it before i love the little cassette singles i just think they're really unique um it was kind of like the cassette uh, the cassette media business. It was like their last stab at cassettes before they went out and were overtaken by CDs. Uh, they started releasing these. I remember picking up cassette singles for, you know, brand new. I think they were like, I don't know, like a buck fifty or something like that back in the day. Uh, but he sent me this, and this is so cool. It's actually still in the shrink wrap. Uh, it's been opened, but it's in the shrink. And it's from the Memories series. And it's uh, Sticks, uh, Babe and Why Me, which is uh, the same as the 45 vinyl single. Um, and so in fact, I'm actually going to remove the old plastic on there. Look at that. Remember these, those little sensor strips? So, you know, you couldn't uh, shoplift them on a $1.50 cassette single. That just cracks me up, but hey, I'm sure many of these were stolen over the years. Um, maybe not this particular one, but cassette singles. Um, anyway, very, very cool, bro. You know, Styx, one of my old, other favorite bands. Very cool uh, tape with the Styx logo on it. So, awesome, man. Thank you so much. And then uh, a CD, and I did not have this one on, on CD. Uh, this is Tangerine Dreams Exit. Uh, yes, I love Tangerine Dream. Hey, look at that. You can see a reflection of me in the camera in the CD of me in the camera in the CD and on and on and on. Anyway, um, very, very cool on Electra. So yeah, I did not have this. I know this is a cassette video and there's vinyl videos and CDs just kind of fall in wherever. Uh, and this one, which really I was so ecstatic to see this. I have this on vinyl. I treasure this on vinyl. 
Um, did not have it on CD, but I do now, and I am just ecstatic. Uh, I got to replace the case on it because I think it got kind of busted up in the in the package. But the first Jocko Pistorius solo LP on CD, and I'm going to do this so that I can actually remove the the promo blurb sticker here. I think I could transfer that to a new case, so I'm going to try. But uh, this album is so, so good. Um, and I love the, uh, the vintage Epic label there. Before they went to the, uh, uh, the blue label on, on vinyl. Um, it's the old orange Epic label. I think that is just so cool. And of course, uh, awesome picture of Jocko there. And his famous uh, fretless jazz bass. Just such an awesome album. So LJ, you hit it out of the park, brother, with that. So those were the four things he sent. Just a little care package. Yet the meaning to all of these is just so incredible, man. Um, so thank you. Uh, on to uh, some cassettes I picked up. Uh, these are thrift store finds. I found this little stack in one stop, and then I found a case full of tapes at another stop. Um, these were 25 cents a piece. I paid five bucks for the full case. So let me show you what I got. First, some, uh, some cool metal pieces. Uh, one non-metal piece, but you know, for a quarter I had to grab it. Uh, Billy Idol, Vital Idol. So, had to get that. So, some metal pieces. We got uh, Far Beyond uh, Far Beyond Driven by Pantera. Clear uh, digital. So, I grabbed that. Um, probably my favorite album by this band, Scum Dogs of the Universe by Guar. I absolutely love Guar. Um, I have so many fun fun memories of Guar and one of the coolest shows I've ever been to uh, as well as one of the messiest. Um, so guys that know Guar, you know what I'm talking about. So grab that and then <clears throat> um, absolutely essential metal album, um, Alice in Hell by Annihilator. And I still don't have this on vinyl. I do have this on CD and now cassette. Um, I'm still looking for a copy of this on vinyl, so if anybody out there stumbles across one, I'm your guy. So, Annihilator, Alice in Hell, and then Never Never Land by Annihilator. So, I was very happy. I've always loved the Annihilator logo. Um, very, very happy to find those. So then, okay, in this case... I'll try and go through these as quickly as possible. Full case here. I'll run through these quick. Not that I needed another copy of this, but it was in there. Peter Gabriel. Melt, or Melt Face. Um, Peter Gabriel So. I think this is like maybe my fourth copy of this. Um, This is uh, a little touch of Schmelson in the Night by Nilsson on RCA. Um, the Pretender, Jackson Brown. I won't open all of these. Uh, Morris Day, Daydreaming. It's never that big of a Morris Day fan, but. Um, you know, the time, but not so much Morris Day. Um, Fame and Fortune by Bad Company. I mean, this is a total eclectic mix of tapes here that's in this box. Um, this is a duplicate for me for sure. Uh, Genesis Invisible Touch. Awesome album. Chardet Promise. This is, uh... Yeah, just a standard portrait tape. I was happy to find this one. Stevie Ray Vaughan and Double Trouble, Live Alive. 
So I've uh, got that. You know, I gotta look at my journey collection um, and see how close I am to completing it. But uh, copy of Departure. Um, yeah, hey, you know, we all have stuff in our collection that, you know, we're a little embarrassed about, but I don't care. I got good memories to this. Billy Ocean Love Zone. Um, very cool tape right here. Um, uh, Can't Buy a Thrill by Steely Dan. Uh, obviously a later pressing because it's on a clear tape. So I thought that was uh, kind of cool. The Way It Is, Bruce Hornsby in the Range. Sly and the Family Stone's Greatest Hits. The soundtrack to Good Morning Vietnam. This was such a good movie. Whenever I hear the mamas and the papas, I always think of this movie. Um, Revenge by the Eurythmics. This is, uh, I believe this is a Tape Club edition. I'll have to double check that. Um, I'm Your Baby Tonight by Whitney Houston. You know, and I like this, uh, you know, the later cassettes have that double fold back cover. I like those, although usually when you find them, a lot of the times they're kind of wrinkled up or whatnot. And this is an artist that I absolutely love. I've been into this guy for years. I have this on vinyl as well as CD, uh, but when I saw the tape, it was cool. Uh, if there's any New Age fans out there, uh, David Arkenstone, and this is on the Narada label. Uh, David Arkenstone is just amazing, and uh, it's the uh, it's a label on a tape. So I was glad to see that in there. Um, little uh, Rock and Soul Part One, Daryl Hall and John Oates. Uh, here's another soundtrack, and just I just I love this movie. Um, I can't help it, but uh, Cocktail. Starring Tom Cruise. Crash by the Human League. Uh, Best of the Doobie Brothers Live. There's another one with the fold over flap. Here's one for Greeno. Culture Club. Just kidding, man. Um, here's a neat comp uh, with a kind of a, a unique label. Uh, it's made in Italy. It's uh, the label is called Masters. It's uh, the Bob Marley collection, best rarities. See right there, made in Italy, and uh, it's another one where it's a you know a printed label on the tape. So that was cool. Anybody remember these guys? Glass Tiger in a white case. The Who's Greatest Hits. Here's another soundtrack for Jewel of the Nile. Essential 80s album, um, Yaz, Upstairs at Eric's. Absolutely love Yaz, Allison Moyer, Riddles in the Sand by Jimmy Buffett, and um, Gravity by Kenny G. And yeah, there's nothing wrong with Kenny G. I heard that. Don't be laughing. Kenny G. So that's that box. So all of those for five bucks. I figured that was a good deal. Uh, so those are my recent uh, cassette pickups. Um, all thrift store material. All in great shape though. And uh, so now I'll show you a 
couple of decks that I picked up, a couple of vintage decks. Uh, one's from 1974. The other one, I believe, was 1979 or 1980. Anyway, here they are. Peace, stay in the groove. So, okay, guys, uh, this is the new deck that I picked up. Um, it's a Akai GXC 50 or 510D uh, glass and extol ferrite head, whatever that means. I haven't looked that up yet. Um, but I looked this deck up online and it was produced in 1974. Uh, to 1975 so it was made uh, I guess over the course of one year uh, two years maybe um, so uh, all stainless steel front as you can see um, beautiful VU meters which all work uh, you have indicator lights on top here for record uh, DLS uh, chrome and Dolby noise reduction uh, a manual counter here and if you look really close, I'm not sure if it shows up on the video, but there's actually a little light grid here, which is kind of interesting, and I'll show you that when I play it. So, a uh, wood case, and as you, you can see, I've got it all polished up and oiled, so that's really nice. Uh, the sides here. And what's really unique is, I mean, obviously, um, I like stuff that's unique, like my flat top JVC, okay? So this is uh, called a vertical deck, um, which is kind of different. It's tall and skinny, as you can see here, uh, unlike you know your basic decks here, which are deep and short. So kind of a really uh, unique deck, um, and I just like stuff that's different. Uh, so here you have DLS, uh, your tape selector for chrome, uh, low noise, Dolby noise reduction on or off, uh, your left and right mic inputs, headphone jack, power button, your output level, come on camera focus, output level, uh, your line in left and right levels, and your mic left and right levels. And you know what's neat about finding these old decks like this? Uh, that I've noticed. I have seen a few in my travels, not this particular model, but just vintage stuff in general. You know, I see this stuff a lot of the times without the knobs on them. And uh, these knobs are really cool. Uh, they're stainless and then they have these little rubber um, rings around them. And uh, this deck was, uh, it was, it was filthy. It was just, um, obviously kept in someone's garage because it was just caked with dust all of your buttons here these grooves that are in the buttons were just filled with dirt and dust so she's all cleaned up and uh, what's also is kinda neat about this is if you look at the buttons okay you'll notice eject record rewind stop forward fast forward and pause Forward is your play. There's no play button. It's called forward. And I thought that was kind of different and uh, unique as well. So the tape itself, um, let me reset the counter there. The eject is also kind of nice. It actually ejects and pops the tape up. See there? So that's, that's you know, kind of cool. And when you feed it in, it like locks. It locks down in there, which is nice. So, <clears throat> I'll give you a uh, little demo here. I can do it without sliding it off. There we go.
the output as a volume control. And I'll show you up here, see that light meter? So as it's playing, it cascades to the right in a slow motion manner. Uh, if you forward, see how fast it goes? And same if you uh, rewind. And I just thought that was just the coolest thing. Um, and so then also on this deck, because it's a vertical unit, what is interesting is on the back, I'll see if I can spin it with one hand. So here's the back of the unit. It actually has these uh, brackets on it, so you could mount it to a wall, and actually hang it on the wall. And I thought that is just so unique. Um, I might actually do that. I'm not sure yet. But uh, you have a, uh, a little plastic panel here with two screws. You remove that and you can quickly access uh, uh, the main capstan belt uh, to change that, which the belts are fine in this. Um, didn't have to change them. Uh, you have your fuse here and as well as your you know your inputs and outputs there and then some rubber bumpers so if you lay it flat these wall mounts are the same depth as your rubber bumpers so you could literally uh, run this as a flat top deck too if you wanted to um, so it's got some weight to it that's for sure so yeah, really cool little unit. Uh, like I said, I got this for 10 bucks at the flea market. And it took me, oh, about two hours to really go through it and, and get it all cleaned up. Uh, popped the, uh, the door off of it, got the heads cleaned, cleaned all the dust out of the, the cassette mechanism, and uh, she's good to go. So another unique vintage deck. Um, so... And I'm finding this a lot of fun. So, peace. And so then, uh, I also thought I'd shoot this one because um, I hadn't shown it. I've shown my JVC uh, and my Akai before, but I had also picked this up uh, a couple weeks ago, and it's the uh, it's a realistic SCT19, um, and this was made by. Uh, Hitachi um, you know Radio Shack the realistic brand uh, a lot of their equipment is made by uh, regular manufacturers uh, I know Pioneer made a bunch of their stuff uh, and other companies but this is uh, uh, made by uh, Hitachi so um, this one here which is you know it's shorter than the other decks, obviously, as you can see, uh, this one has, uh, you know, your your tape bias selector here, uh, EQ, uh, Dolby noise reduction, in out, and FM, and I'm not sure uh, what that's for. Uh, your recording level, left and right, uh, dual stack knob, as well as a uh, indicator piece here. So, like, if you like to always record at six. You know, I guess you just mark it and then turn your levels accordingly. Uh, your output indicator here, uh, right and uh, left microphones, uh, headphone jack, VU meters, uh, manual counter. Um, let me see. Uh, let me grab a tape. Okay, so here we go. I uh, got a tape in there. Um, I'll just play this one. You know, I can't remember what I had picked this up for. I want to say three or five bucks at Goodwill or something like that. Um, but uh, this one was was pretty pretty clean as it was. Um, didn't have to do much to this one except uh, pretty much just a, a quick dusting. But uh, yeah. So, 
that's that one. <laughs>